Hello everyone. I want to tell you about our work on pursuit planning with special action abstraction. This is joint work with Iran Ershkovitz, Dorot Zvon and Guy Shani, and I'm Ronnie Stern. We're all from Ben Gurion University in Israel. I'm going to tell you about a new problem, and I'll talk about how to model it, and about a new form of special action abstraction that can uh, that works well for our problem, but can also be applied to other problems as well. So what is our problem? Our problem is a special case of a, the pursuit evasion problem. Pursuit evasion is a very well studied problem where you have an evader agent, a pursuer agent. The evader agent wants to evade, the pursuer agent wants to well, pursue the evader and catch it. This problem has many many applications, but the specific type of pursuit evasion problem we deal with has another set of special properties. First of all, the evader is, doesn't, doesn't just want to evade, it wants to reach one of these targets. Also, the evader is faster than the pursuer. And the pursuer, while being slower than the evader, has another uh, advantage, or has one advantage. The advantage, edge, the advantage is that the evader must, must commit beforehand to a path, before it starts to move. And once it starts to move, it cannot react and change anything. On the other hand, the pursuer, it knows the distribution over which path the evader would choose and also can watch the evader and, and react over time. And the task we're dealing with is how to find a policy for the pursuer agent. As I said before, this problem is not just something we invented. It has a real world application. Unfortunately, I cannot share that application with you, but it's really important and really interesting. To make you, to help you remember this, this type of problem, I prepare this small set of cartoon. We are, we are in a pursuit evasion problem. The pursuer is slow, but it can see the evader. The evader is fast, but it's blind. Okay, let's start. Okay, so before I tell you how we solved it, let, let's talk about some baseline. One baseline is called the dog policy. In the dog policy, the pursuer in every iteration sees where the evader is currently at and moves one step towards that location. That may seem sensible, but in some cases it's very stupid. Let's see this example. The evader will go straight to the target and the pursuer would apply the dog policy. Let's see what happens. As you can see, in this case, the evader reached the target, so the dog policy was not optimal in this case. Now, the pursuer knows a set of paths that the evader might choose, so it can choose to intercept them in smarter places than where the dog policy suggests to go. Another possible baseline is what we call the wait for it policy. In this policy, the pursuer stays in place and watches the evader move. And once it's true, what is the path the evader has chosen, it computes the shortest path to intercept that. This also would work very well in some cases, but in other cases it would be very bad. Let's see this example. In this example, if the pursuer would use the wait for it policy, it would start to move only when it's too late. So we really need some kind of more principled approach to maximize our expected probability of catching the evader. So the contribution of our work is several ways to model this problem, which we call pursuit evasion with fixed evasion path, PEFEP. So we show different ways to model it. Then we use a well-known MDP solver called RTDP algorithm to solve our problem. While doing that, we observe that this problem has a very large state space in our modeling. So we propose a general purpose action abstraction uh, for solving uh, this problem in large 3D spaces. And we also propose a domain-specific heuristic to speed up the search. In the paper, we describe all of these things, but in this talk, I will only focus on the first and third bullets. So let's talk first about modeling. This is, after all, the CAPS workshop. We model this problem as an MDP. The reward is plus one for catching the evader. The actions of the pursuer agent is to change velocity, accelerate or decelerate, and this happens all in three-dimensional space. The transition function, well, the actions are deterministic, but we do have uncertainty over which path the evader has chosen, so we have uncertainty over where the evader would go to next. You could be picky and say this is a deterministic MDP, but really these are often uh, uh, considered just MDPs. So we have reward and action and transition function, but what is the state? Here things can become interesting. One way to model the state is to look at the location and velocity of both agents. This makes sense sometimes, but it doesn't look at the time dimension. And really the pursuer agent might act differently 
in, in different points in time, even if they have exactly the same location and velocities. So we can add time to the mix and include in the state location, velocity, and time. Even this model is not perfect. Let's see this example. In this example, the evader has two, two paths to the targets and they intersect in some location. From the pursuer perspective, if it sees the current state, it's really important not only to see where the evader is now and where the pursuer is now and what's their velocities, but also where the evader has been in the past, because that would help us infer where it will be in the future. So we suggest another way to model the state. And in that way, in that, mod in that modeling, the state includes the location of both agents, the velocity of the pursuer, time, and, and here comes the important part, a belief over the possible path the evader might choose. Initially, that belief is the initial distribution that we know about the possible evader path. But as the evader moves along, some path become not irrelevant, which would update the belief. So we have three ways to model the problem as an MDP. Now we can just use an MDP solver to solve it. One such MDP solver is RDP. I should note that our model, the last modeling, the modeling of beliefs, uh, require, we propose a, a nice way to compactly represent that belief as a tree of path, and you can see details about that in the paper. But back to solving it. So we can take each of these modeling and run an RTDP to solve it. But the problem is that these, uh, uh, these modeling incur a very large state space. What you can see in this table is for each of these mo modeling choices, the size of the state space that it incurs. If you don't want to look at the math, let's look at an example. Let's assume we have a 10 by 10 by 10 grid, which is not a large grid, and the pursuer's maximum velocity is 2, and everything is discretized. So it's minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2 for each of the three dimensions. And if the evader has five paths, each of length 5. So this is a very simple and small problem. Even for this problem, the number of states in the belief-based MDP is almost 3 million. That's very large for MDP solvers. So, we really need to find a smarter way to um, address this, this, this problem if we want to scale to large grids. This is where we want, I want to highlight that we really do want to scale to larger grids. That's, that's because our real world problem that we are solving really requires large grids. So what can we do? The key idea that we, we are proposing is to limit the number of decision points as a function of how far the evader is from the pursuer. In essence, we are decreasing the amount of agency for the evader, uh, for the pursuer when the evader is far, far away. As an example, look at these two cases. It's the same problem, but on the right, the pursuer is very close to the evader, while on the left, it's very far. Obviously, when the evader is very close, you really need to reason about every time step. But when it's very far away, you can get away with reasoning about every set of time steps, because it really doesn't matter every small action that you do when the evader is so far away. We formalize this by defining abstract action for the pursuer agent. The abstract action we look at are specifically uh, of the following form. It says accelerate or decelerate until you reach some certain velocity and then maintain that velocity for a fixed number of time steps. In essence, this creates jumps in sp space time. Um, and when you're in this jump, you don't need to reason about what to do in between. Of course, this loses some some of our control over the agent, but this would pay off by having fewer decision points. The question then is how many time steps do, do we want to jump? And to this end, we propose the following formula, and, and the it, details not, are not important, but look in the middle there, you have LP minus LE. Uh, LP and LE are the location of the pursuer and the, evade, and the evader. So we jump more time steps when the evader is more far away from the pursuer, and fewer time steps when it's not. All the other masks are, is there just to make sure that it's more discreet. Okay, so let's see if this works in practice. We evaluated uh, our uh, different modeling choices and using and not using the action abstraction that I, I just explained uh, on the following three uh, three dimensional grid. You don't see the third dimension, but it goes deep one in. Um, so in each of these, what you see, the red point on the left, that's the location of the evader, the initial location of the evader agent. The blue points on the right are possible initial location of the pursuer. Green stars are the targets. And the, and the lines, well, you guessed it, that's the evader path. We experiment with different types of uh, resolution for these problems, with grids up to 1000 by 600 by 5, 
and with up to 400 evader path. And I'm going to show you just a subset of the results. What you can see here is a comparison of the different modeling approaches and the lines that, that says WFI, that's the weight for it based on that I explained before. The upper table is the collision rate. The average reward or the probability of catching the evader using the, 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 the chose, chose, chosen modeling. And the lower table is how fast we were able to get to that policy. So the upper table, higher is better. And for the lower better table, lower is better because it means faster uh, convergence. The different columns means how far we were from the target and how far the pursuer was from the target, which makes the problem harder. And you can see that in most cases, the belief-based modeling was better especially when the problem becomes harder. What you can see here is uh, uh, the comparison between using just the atomic actions and using our uh, uh, abstract action that I explained before. And that, the, the, these results are in the abs, abs column and the atomic are the baseline just using atomic actions. And what you can see here is that using the abstract actions pays off significantly. It results in much, much, much faster solving and much better collision rate. The better collision rate is because in the other case, we sometimes reach a timeout. So clearly, using action abstraction is here is better. So to conclude, we introduced a new problem called pursuit evasion with fixed evader path, which is motivated by a real world problem. We explored different ways to model it based on MDP, and we addressed the problem of scaling to large grids by just, uh, proposing a special action abstraction that works well here, but also for, can work for other problems with three-dimensional uh, similar properties. In the paper, there is also detail about heuristics and it, deeper analysis. And in the future, we're now working on comparing this with a deeper RL approach and creating a grid agnostic state representation. That's it. Thank you.